let's take a look at a little Halloween themed chemistry. In particular, today I want to do a little demo called Boo Bubbles. Now just as the name suggests, we need a really good bubble solution. So if you're ever looking to make a bubble solution at home, it's pretty simple. First thing you need is one cup of water, eight ounces. Now tap water will do just fine. However, ideally, distilled water would work even better. It's filtered out all of the ions or minerals that are in tap water, and you'll ensure that that water is just going to interact with the soap and the glycerin that you add. So for every one cup of water that you use, you're gonna to wanna to use two tablespoons of soap. I'm using blue soap, you can use clear soap, you can use yellow soap, orange soap, purple soap, maybe, perhaps. Once you've got two tablespoons of that added, you're gonna to wanna to add one tablespoon of glycerin. Now glycerin is gonna give your bubbles a little bit of strength. So that way they hold up as you use them. Now glycerin can be found at the grocery store. It might be labeled as vegetable glycerin, but it'll work just fine. I'm gonna give my bubble solution a slight stir here. When you're working and making a bubble solution, if you want crystal clear bubbles, then you're gonna to wanna to try to avoid any foam forming on the top of your bubble solution. Another little hint with your bubble solutions, you wanna make sure that you allow your bubble solutions to age a little bit. Meaning, let that soap and that glycerin sit and really interact with that water. It's really gonna be able to allow those bubbles to be strong when you're using that solution. 24 hours is a pretty good time frame, so you always wanna prepare your bubble solution the day before. To that end, I'm gonna put this bubble solution we just made aside because I actually have a ghost bucket full of already prepared bubble solution for us to use today. The next thing we're gonna to use today is a very interesting chemical. You may have heard of it, it's called dry ice. Now dry ice is actually solid carbon dioxide or CO2. Now, dry ice is a very cold substance. It's at a temperature of about negative 78 degrees Celsius, which converts to negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. So you never wanna to touch dry ice if you interact with it with your bare hands. Always use a pair of insulated gloves, or like I have today, a pair of tongs. Now dry ice is carbon dioxide in the solid state. But if you notice and look carefully, Around the white solid, you always see this fog or smoke, if you will. Now that fog or smoke that you see is actually gaseous CO2. The reason being dry ice or carbon dioxide undergoes a process called sublimation, where it goes directly from the solid state of CO2 to the gaseous state of CO2, never passing through the liquid state of CO2. Now chem students, take note here. I mentioned very specifically that it's the solid state of CO2 transferring to the gaseous state of CO2. The reason being, you never change the substance chemically. It doesn't form a new substance here. That indicates that it's just a physical change because you're changing the physical state of the substance. In fact, all of your changes of state of matter are going to be a physical change, never chemical. So we're gonna need some of this today. Lastly, we're gonna need a gas collection container or generator, if you will. Now, my generator right now is actually filled with warm water. The reason being, it's gonna speed up the process of sublimation and we're gonna produce a little more CO2 gas, which is gonna be good because that's what's actually gonna fill our bubbles. So, I'm gonna drop in a few chunks of our CO2 to our warm water. And if you notice, the process of sublimation has greatly increased here. One more chunk here. 
for good measure. Move this to the side. Now, if you take a look, the CO2 is sitting above the water. The reason being, CO2 does not dissolve in water. In other words, it's insoluble in water. So, again, all of this fog that you see is just the gaseous CO2, not water vapor. I'm going to adjust our lid here because what it's going to do is it's going to focus our CO2 gas through our little tube here. I'm going to take our, the end of the tube and I'm going to place it in our bubble solution and the CO2 is going to very quickly fill up those bubbles and produce some moo bubbles. Now, typically when you're working with bubbles and if you go to put them or place them in your hand, they pop. The reason being, your hand is filled with residue, oils, dirt, unfortunately, germs sometimes. Those oils and that dirt cause the bubble to break. However, if you have a clean cotton surface and you work ever so gently enough here, you can get your bubble to stick and not break. Oh, not gentle enough with that one. Let's see if I can do it again. Whoa, oh, there we go. Just gotta love chemistry. Center spot seems to be where it oh, they like. Now, to fix the issue of the bubble popping in your hand, if you have dry cotton gloves and you place one on your hand, then you just might be able to hold a bubble. Now, just to be clear here, cotton gloves, great for holding bubbles, not great for holding our dry ice just in case you ever happen to work with it. So let's see here. Now, with that clean cotton glove, you're able to hold a few boot bubbles. Gotta adjust our lid here. By adjusting the lid, it helps us force some more of that CO2 through our tube. There we go. Let's see if we can get one more real good boot bubble here. Hope you have a ghostly good Halloween.